Stitchless TV. Now today on Stitchless TV we're going to make this gorgeous little clutch bag made out of woven men's ties. Ten inches coming across the top where the zip's going to go which is 26 centimetres and the length of it is seven and a half inches which is 19 centimetres. So we are now ready to make a clutch bag out of our woven men's ties. I've got everything all set up, I like the way it looks, so I'm just going to put things here that I need at the moment. So I've got my machine on a straight stitch, about two and a half. Now because I'm using fake leather, I probably don't need to change it to a leather needle, but let's see. So I'm going to fold it over so my fabric is right sides together. And I'm lining it up so that hopefully <laughs> I'm going to be sewing on just that side of those ties, but we'll have to see. Put your needle in first of all. Make sure everything is lined up properly, okay? Now you might want to pin this. I'm going to go forwards and back and I'm just going to sew straight down, making sure that I'm lining it up so that I will have the edge of that tie as the top. So let's see. Now when you get to the end, go back some forwards. So it should look like that. Now we'll take it to an ironing board and press it from the wrong side, very important. But before we do that, I want to cut off a load of this excess here and cut it off nice and straight. It's quite thick. Now you could probably get away with not pressing it. I'll leave it up to you. Now sometimes what they do with uh, leather, um, they sort of put a tiny bit of glue along there. Okay, and you can even use a kind of Pritt stick glue if you think you can leave it and press it and put like a weight on there. But I'm quite happy with it like that. So I'm going to go straight in and start doing the zip. Okay, so if you're happy with how that looks, you need to put your zip right sides together with your uh, leather or fake leather. And what we're going to do is, we're going to do this without a zip foot, okay? Now I find it, once again, I find it so much easier so as to keep things in place. Look, I'm not even going to open my zip. I'm going to zigzag with the leather against the edge of the zip, but the zip is right sides together. Everything is all lined up nicely, okay? It's only sort of on the edge, almost like an overlock, because we're using it as a stay stitch, okay? Because sometimes this sort of thing can be a tricky job. So if you do it like this, nothing stretches, nothing moves, and it'll be fine. So this is to hold our fabrics together, all right? So it looks like that. Now what we have to do is we've got to get one of our linings. Do you remember we cut out the lining before? Make sure it's long enough, which it is, and we're going to have to trim it back afterwards. And we're going to do the same thing and create a sort of zip sandwich. Look at that. So the zip is right sides together with the fabric. See that? We're then going to get this fabric, the lining, put it together, make sure the edges all line up and do exactly the same thing 
going along the edge. Now I'm able to do it like this because I'm using a chunky jean zip and a zigzag stitch. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but whenever we start, we're always starting at the zip opening end because for me, that's the most important end that lines up. So I'm going to go back some forwards there just because I need it to be held for a minute. And then, if I'm happy that everything's lined up nicely, I'm going to zigzag my way all the way down. Remember, this is a... Remember, this is a stay stitch to keep everything together. Right, now what you can do is you can either do an under stitch by pushing everything back. I know it's black, I'm sorry. <laughs> pushing everything back and top stitch in there. But it's fine. Once it's pressed, it will be absolutely fine. But don't press it directly on the leather or fake leather okay but we're not going to press it now we'll press it after we've done the other side so now you've got to do exactly the same on the other side our other side is the fake leather we're going to put it right sides together now once again we're going to line it up with our important side so look we've got everything right sides together okay that's the back that's the side with the ties on it right sides together lining everything up because I'm trying to sew at this weird angle okay so zigzag stitch I'll move my hand in a minute oh, put the needle in. zigzag stitch just to hold it all in place and we can even because we're doing it just on the edge we can even get back but we can get past the bulky zip Just a stay stitch. Okay, so now what we have is we've got our front attached, the front lining attached, and the back attached. Now, do you remember what we did before when we attached the back? It's a bit challenging, I know, I'm sorry. So look, what I'm doing, so that, that's my back. I'm going to fold it over. In your head, what you've got to think is you're creating a zip sandwich, all right? And fabric right sides together so that's that is your fabric okay this is your lining my zip sandwich look zip sandwich the zip is facing the back there's the back this is facing that lining everything up but you really want to line it up with your lining <laughs> so I'm gonna line it up with that lining and do that zigzag stitch again. So the zigzag, it goes one on, one off, one on, one off, like when you do surging or overlocking. And that will hold everything really nicely in place. Right, so now we've got the lining attached and our fabrics attached. Okay, now if you're really happy with the alignment of everything, and I think this is just about okay, then you are safe to do like your permanent stitch. And we do that like this. Now I haven't even changed this to a zipper foot. Obviously, it will be better if you do, but because I want everybody, else, everybody to be able to do it, I'm gonna see if I can do it just by putting the needle over to the left, so I'm not doing zigzag anymore. I'm doing a straight. I'm doing a straight stitch. My needle, look, it went from there, oops, over to the left. So that's as close as I can over there, yeah. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew. So I just touch the tops of those V's, okay? Because I don't want to see all the gaps and the zigzags from the other side. So I'm going to sew. I know it's black. I know you want me to do it in another colour. Sorry. You can start at whatever end you want now because this is all stay stitched together. So look, just go carefully and just touch the tops of the V's or, you know, definitely be proud of the V's. OK. 
Can you see that? Just about. <laughs> so then it's nice and clean on this side. Right, so we've got so we've done that side, so now we flap everything over and go on to the other side. Look, so that's the lining, flapping it over. So now I've got to do the lining. So same again, I can start at whatever end I want, okay. Right, so this is what we've got so far. Now before I trim back the lining, I'm going to give it a good old press, okay. So I'm going to press it all out, like that. With the pressing, I'm opening up the zip, and the main thing I'm focusing on is pressing back this lining. Okay, now don't melt anything or, or burn anything and then doing it on both sides. I'm sort of pulling the lining back and pulling the uh, leather, fake leather, away from the zip, sort of pulling it away quite hard and then gently with steam pressing it. Now, if you're using leather, you probably don't want steam, but it's all right with this fake leather. And then if you need to get down here, close the zip so that you can pull it away from down this end. Okay, now the pressing of it is actually quite important. Right, so we've done that. Now remember, we don't want to press directly on here. I think I'm going to press it a little bit more. Now please, be really careful, okay? Especially with these foiled leathers. So I'm pulling it away, and then um, I'm pressing it. But I'm very aware that if I overdo it, I'll either melt it <laughs> or take my uh, foiled leather stuff off. Before we move on to the next part, we can safely cut our lining now. So just cut it to the same, same length. As wherever your bag finishes. Okay, let's put these bits out the way just for the minute. The most important thing in the whole wide world <laughs> when making this bag is you must, absolutely, must open your zip, okay? Very, very important. Doesn't have to be all the way, but you need to open your zip, okay? Then the next thing is you put your outer fabrics together, right sides together, and your lining fabrics right sides together. Now this is the bit that I often, I know it's not very inspiring, but um, I often get it wrong. So what we do is our zip, our zip needs to go away from us and our lining, our other seam, our inside seam comes towards us partly to distribute the weight but also, you know, the bulk but also so you get a nice finish there. Now, because I like to make things complicated, you know me, um, we're going to put this D-ring in there as well, this great big lumpy thing. So I'm going to align the D-ring with my fake leather and put that in there as well. So I'll repeat, zip is going away, lining up the teeth, very important, and you are going to sew from that zip, pushing this seam allowance towards you, okay, the opposite direction, and sew straight down with whatever the seam allowance was, which was a centimetre. So I'm holding all those seams together. I'm just going to get in the way whilst I line everything up, okay? Centimetre seam allowance. Oh, put my zip, my, put my sit, stitch <laughs> back to the middle. Centimetre seam allowance. My zip's going that way and this seam allowance is coming towards me to spread the weight. And hopefully, that's right. I'm aligning my additional feature that complicates things a bit. My D-ring. 
and I'm going to just sew straight. Now, I always say this, if it's really, really bulky, use the wheel on the side, all right? Just use the wheel on the side. You can sew just by turning the wheel. But if it feels okay, then just go straight. Now, I'm going to line everything up and go straight down with whatever I think the seam allowance is. And stop near the edge, going backwards and forwards. Now we're not going to go across the bottom because we need to have a look at it, okay? Right, now, whatever you did on the open zip side, okay, do you remember we pushed the zip that way? We're going to have to do the same with our extension bit there, okay? So, we'll make a funny little shape with that extension bit, so as if we're pushing the zip away. And we're pushing our lining away too. But now we're going to sew this way around. But I need to show you. Make sure everything's all flat and good. Right, so we've got our lobster clip for the other side. So I'm going to slip that in as close to the top as I, I can. Because I did sort of forget. Put it in there. Make sure everything is lining up nicely. So remember, we folded that little extra bit so it goes that way, and I seam allowance this way. And I'm going to sew with whatever the seam allowance is supposed to be, okay? Which I think is a centimetre. We'll see. Now, if we're happy with that, then we can safely stitch across the bottom. Now, what I want you to stick to is you can sort of see the bump of the straight line of the tie going across. So stick to that rather than your um, edge of the back of your bag. So I've got my needle in. I can sort of see the impression of the last tie. Sorry about the hand. So I'm hoping it's right and I'm going to sort of follow it all the way along. And then backwards and forwards at the end there. Okay, so it should look like that. Now what I am going to do, I just want to give a little curve there. Because corners are very rarely corners when it's such thick bulky stuff because you can't really get it like that well I can't really get it like that so I might just curve it off a little bit but I'm not sure yet but I need to reinforce it anyway right can you see we just do this little softening of the corner it just makes it look nicer so do it on the other corner as well right now when you've done that if you're really confident and sure that it's good then sort of trim it around like that so just trim back that curve a bit. Trim back the excess fabric, all right? Right, we're nearly there. <laughs> so now, do you remember we only started sewing from there? We only started sewing from there and then we came down. Well, now we're going to stitch the linings together, okay? Carefully go over where you've already sewed. Use the wheel on the side if you think it's really thick and it's going to break your needle. Put your linings together. Make sure they're all nicely lined up. And sew. Centimetre seam allowance. Down the lining. Backwards and forwards at the end. Right, do the same on the other side as well. So, ready to turn it the right way round.
very exciting moment, but also a bit nerve-wracking, I find. Whew, looking good, looking good. It's going to be a little bit delicate, okay? So I've put my finger in to pop out our little extension bit so that it's nice and square, all right? So I did that. And you remember we trimmed back the ends of the zips? You know, when we did the scary bit inside, so we shouldn't have so much bulk where the zip is at the side. Pull down the lining. Now, you know when I said we've got to work the corners, when you have really thick fabric, you've got to really pull and tug and work those corners so that they end up being really nice and flat. But when I say pull and tug, you've still got to be a bit gentle. But you have to curve them a little bit because when it's so th when it's so thick, there's no way that that could be like a tight, tight, sharp corner. So that's why I've curved it a little bit. Anyway, I'm trying to do this gently but firmly. Okay, so because you're dealing with so many complicated things, I mean, they're not complicated, you'll find that things will feel a little bit distorted. But then once we start working the seams, we sort of press them out like that. But being careful not to disturb the ties too much, it will just look really professional. So I'm going to start flattening my seams, okay? So I've got my tea towel on top. Now it's not too hot because a lot of my t ties were actually silk, of course. <laughs> I'm doing lots of pressure and lots of steam on the tie bit. Okay. So I think that's pretty good. Now you want to know about the lining, don't you? The lining, when I'm definitely, definitely happy, then, and only when I'm definitely, definitely happy, I'm going to press it and hopefully not melt it. Press it, fold back the seam allowance that we used for the actual bag. Press that. And then I'm simply going to do a little stitch along there, holding it together. And then we're done. Now, I don't know what you think about this, but um, I think it looks quite nice with the chain as well. But the real reason why I have a lobster clip on one side and this D-ring thing on the other, because the way that I like to wear my clutch bags is I just sort of have it on my thumb like that so I can hold it. So that's why it's important that you have the D-ring on the same side as the zip. And then I normally like hang my keys or something like that off the lobster clip. But pretty good, huh? So that's not bad, made out of men's ties. Thank you so much for watching Stitchless TV. Now, if you make something out of some men's ties and weave them together, I'd love to see them. So share them on my Facebook page or tag me on Instagram as well at Stitchless TV. See you again very, very soon. Bye.